Life on Earth can be found wherever it's possible to survive, but also in some places that at first glance seem to be completely inhospitable for anything alive. Places that are too cold or too hot, bone dry, salty, acidic or under immense pressure. Normally, complex organisms like plants or animals cannot survive in such conditions, but one man's floor is another man's ceiling. Such extreme environments are the perfect niches for some tough little organisms, the extremophiles. This video is brought to you by India, my lovely Patreon supporter who suggested this subject. If you want me to make a video about the subject of your choosing, check out my Patreon page. Now let's get on with the video. First of all, let's clear something up. Extremophiles are not organisms that live in areas unsuitable or uncomfortable for humans. No, these beings live in places where pretty much any other living thing would almost immediately die. But we still don't know too much about them, they were only truly discovered in the early 80s. Prior to that, the very few examples of extremophiles were classified differently. Some of these creatures are very hardened to radiation. Others live in complete darkness in the icy depths of the Antarctic. Some manage to survive in highly acidic, boiling hot springs and bacteria have been found living inside rocks 600 meters below the sea floor. Most extremophiles are microbial, although there are some more complex creatures that fit into this category. Although they might seem insignificant, they are actually vital for studying life on Earth and even beyond. With their help, we can learn about the true limits of life and thus can hypothesize about how life could survive on other planets. Not to mention the fact that when life appeared here, conditions on Earth were hellish to say the least. Many scientists believe the first life forms sprang out around hydrothermal vents far under the ocean's surface. In other words, the first life forms on Earth could have very well been extremophiles. The best way to understand extremophiles is by examples. And we'll start off with Geogemma barossi, nicknamed Strain 121. This is a single-celled microbe, part of the Archaea domain, a separate domain from bacteria or eukarya. Strain 121 was discovered deep under the Pacific Ocean, near a hydrothermal vent in 2003. What makes this little one extreme is that even at 121 degrees Celsius, it's still able to reproduce. More than that, at 130 degrees, it's still a viable individual, although growth is halted. So much did this microbe evolve to this specific environment that at normal temperatures, like the human body's internal warmth at 37 degrees, strain 121 cannot grow or reproduce. If you're now wondering what in the world could this thing eat in such an environment, it's actually rather simple. Iron. This thing actually metabolizes iron oxide. Deinococcus radiodurans. What is special about this one? Well, the hint is in the name. This is one of the most radiation resistant life forms that can be found on Earth. This thing can withstand a dose of 5000 grays of ionizing radiation with no loss of viability. A gray is about 100 rads and is defined as the absorption of 1 joule of radiation energy per kilogram of matter. Now, to put that into perspective, Deinococcus is fine with 5000 grays. Triple that and it will sustain some damage but not necessarily its viability. A human is dead at only 5 grays and the famous and beloved tardigrades will die at 4000 grays. The capacity of this microbe to repair its damaged DNA is absolutely astounding. Oh, but it gets better. You see, Deinococcus radiodurans is what's called a poly-extremophile. This thing can also withstand extreme cold, dehydration, high acidity and even vacuum. 
It has been listed, and rightfully so, as the world's toughest bacterium in the Guinness Book of World Records. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Ok, now we can move on to the next fact. As we all know, life on Earth cannot exist without water. But it doesn't take much water for some creatures to survive. Crococcidiopsis is a fine example. This is a primitive cyanobacteria that can astound with its ability to survive in very harsh environments. Found in the Atacama Desert in Chile and in the dry valleys of McMurdo in Antarctica, this creature is able to resist desiccation. It does so partly because it colonizes the underside of small translucent rocks. The condensation that gathers here is enough for them to survive and the translucent quality of the rock provides enough sunlight for photosynthesis to occur. Ok, so this doesn't sound so bad until you hear some statistics about this creature's environment. On average, the Atacama Desert receives about 15 millimeters of rain per year. But that is only an average. Some weather stations have never received rain since they were first set up. Between 1570 and 1971, there was no significant rainfall here. And this hyperaridity has been going on for at least 3 million years. Some sections though have experienced extreme arid conditions for 200 million continuous years. This is the environment Crococcidiopsis has to live in. And it does so without a hinge. Even more, it can also withstand high and low temperatures, ionizing radiation and high salinity. If you dig deep enough, you might encounter some hellish creatures, like the devil worm. Scientifically known as Halicephalobus mephisto, this is a type of roundworm and it's currently the deepest living known animal. It was detected in 2011 in ores recovered from gold mines in South Africa from a depth of 3.6 kilometers. No other multicellular life on Earth that we know of can go below 2 kilometers. This nematode, the proper designation of a roundworm, is only 0.5 millimeters long and feeds off of bacteria, most of them also extremophiles. They live in and around some very old groundwater, in complete darkness, very high pressures and with less than 1% of the oxygen levels normally found in most oceans. If this isn't extreme, I don't know what is. Natronomonas pharaonis is an extremely halo alkalophilic archaeon. In other words, this thing can survive in highly alkaline solutions like bleaches or oven cleaners. It's able to grow in solutions with a pH of around 11, a solution in which ammonia or metal ions are reduced to extremely low levels. These are just one of the extremophile species that can withstand the extreme conditions of soda lakes. These lakes are highly saturated with salts and yet Natronomonas pharaonis doesn't just survive here, it thrives. Somehow, it managed to adapt its metabolism, cell envelope and respiratory chain to cope with an environment that would kill most of us if we would even dare to approach it. As you can see, there are plenty of examples of extremophiles here on Earth. And although they are not so prevalent, their existence does prove something. Life can adapt to some pretty wild conditions. When we look at these creatures, it sounds easy to assume that they're not even from this planet. But they are. And the conditions they live in resemble conditions found on Earth just a few hundred million years after it was formed. This is proof that life can form and thrive in harsh conditions. And do you know what the universe has in abundance? Lots and lots of planets where conditions are so harsh that life as we know it seems impossible, but only at first glance. 
The existence of extremophiles is the main reason why NASA and other space agencies around the world believe in the possibility of some primitive life forms beneath the surface of Mars. We now have the tools, the technology, the understanding and the will to do the experiments and make the measurements, to see whether or not biology as we understand it does in fact work beyond our world. All thanks to some tiny creatures that created their own safe haven in the most hostile places of Earth. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.